Hey there and welcome to My Green Pets. This is William Green. We're going to start out today by looking at a plant that is in full bloom. This is the Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft. It's also commonly known as a black orchid. As you can see the flowers here are not really black. They're more like a kind of dark purplish red. But in the right light they certainly do look black. This is not my plant. This is another plant in the greenhouse where I rent space. But I just figured that you guys would want to see this. Four spikes. It looks absolutely incredible. It also has a very kind of light but interesting fragrance. Kind of mentholish. Kind of maybe, maybe like cherry menthol. Um, the plant has already lost most of its leaves for the season. Which is interesting because most of mine are still in uh, growth mode. But just that I'd like to share this with you. When I walked past it in the greenhouse I said man that plant <laughs> looks great. I hope that my catacetum types look somewhat similar but who knows four spikes is a lot to ask for well going back to my green pets to my collection uh, the first thing i want to show you guys today is that i got some net pots uh, and i want to repot some of my plants in these net pots i noticed that some of them their roots seem to be staying a little bit too wet in solid pots and so i was kind of trying to decide which plants i want to repot i've got a couple bubble films here on the left and the bulbo films that I have tend to do well when their roots stay moist. Uh, but these pots, um, I'm not sure if they're staying a little bit too moist in there. You can see that right now it's this, uh, this is a bulbo film lobbyi, Kathy's Gold. And it's putting out a new growth. And to me, I think that's a good time to repot because it's also putting out new roots. So it would kind of reestablish quickly if it were repotted. But some other plants that I think that need to be repotted are some of these Cattleya seedlings. And what I've noticed is that these Cattleya seedlings, when they're young, I think that they can handle a little bit more constant moisture. But now that they've started to mature, I've noticed that a lot of their roots seem kind of rotted and not in great shape. So, and you can see there's a root even trying to escape the pot, like, let me out of there. So... I think what I'm going to do is instead of repotting the bulbo films, I'm going to repot these cattleyas. And because I only have four new pots, I'm going to, the smallest plants I'm actually going to put together in the same pot into what's called a community pot or com pot. And hopefully that's going to, that's going to go well. So we'll see that later. You're looking right now at how the bulbo film at Kynolabium, he's got really big spoon shaped leaves and this incredible flower that blooms on the end of a long flowering spike. This plant, it first put out the spike in August of 2018, and it's been in bloom every three weeks or so since then, so over a year. This is the 15th flower on the spike. You can see the um, lip of the plant is hinged and flips, but flops back and forth in the wind, and that kind of helps the plant attract pollinators as well as push them into its pollen when it climbs inside. Here's another bulbophyllum, this much smaller one. This is bulbophyllum antiniferum. And I'm really happy to be able to show you guys this plant in bloom. It hasn't bloomed for well over a year for me. Had some issues with the growth, but you can see why it's called the antenna bulbophyllum. It's got cute little antenna hanging off of the petals. And uh, in the right light, the little purple dots just seem to float. It also has that hinged lip action that I showed you in the echinolabium. And uh, there's a really interesting video here on YouTube on bulbophyllum pollination. Basically, that little flip, flip actually, uh, the lip flips forward and, and the fly or whatever the pollinator is, it gets kind of knocked into the pollen that then sticks to its back. And then when it visits another flower, it gets knocked into the back and it pollinates the plant. Okay, so let's look. That uh, Millennium Magic was this type of plant. This is a catacetum type. This one is Catacetum Fong Sing, and you can see on the right as well as on the left, there are spikes pushing out. So this is really exciting. The bulbs are really, really nice and swollen up, and uh, this plant will be blooming in the next couple of months. All right, let's talk about the Cattleyas. Now, this Cattleya has got my full attention right now because it is very, very, it's got very few roots. And I've been using some rooting hormones on these plants to try to spur some root growth. And as you can see in the old kind of brownish roots, you can see several little root tips pushing out. So hopefully those are going to keep growing and this plant will get some 
root growth on it and be able to kind of refill its bulbs a little bit with water and start growing again. Uh, all the cattleyas, actually all my plants have got, been getting this root hormone treatment and as you can see there's lots and lots of roots growing out. It's a combination of kelp max which is a kelp based fertilizer as well as uh, what is it indole 3 butyric acid in, in very very dilute solution and you can see the results here man the, the roots have just been pouring out of these cattleyas um, as well as some of my other plants and uh, it's a really good sign a strong healthy root system can support more top growth and ultimately bigger and more flowers now this one is Falchilleriana and it's gearing up for a wonderful show, hopefully. Um, it's put out a brand new leaf uh, and then it's got a second leaf pushing out here. So two big new leaves, both bigger than last year's leaves. Hopefully it's going to be blooming this winter with a pretty show. And then I'm grabbing the seed pod on Cattleya Rex which was pollinated earlier in August. And as you can see, it really is starting to tape, take on that shape of a fertilized seed pod. It's interesting that orchids can still do this even if there's no fertilized seed inside, but hopefully that's not the case. All right, so let's go back to the repotting. In the end, I decided to repot these five little cattleyas. The three on the right got their own pots, and then the other two uh, were planted in separate pots. So here they are at the front of my collection now in these net pots. I'm really hoping that they're going to be able to dry out faster now, that the roots won't be sitting in moist ickiness at the bottom of a pot because the bottom of these net pots are still, it's that net mesh material. So hopefully that is going to contribute to better root growth, better root survival, and ultimately faster growing and healthier little Cattleya seedlings. Well guys, that is about it for today. I really appreciate you stopping by to check on my green pets. Uh, it's interesting, I have met a couple of um, viewers of my channel recently and I just want to give a shout out to you guys. Thanks for your interest and uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. And uh, that's it for this week. So until next time, I'm William Green and have a great one. See ya.